Today we are breaking down Jun Seo Bay, who has won another world championship, and unlike most Taekwondo people who win because of their height and they're super tall, Jun Seo Bay is actually one of the shorter guys in his division, so once again we're going to break down his game. The reason this is special is because before he used to break down and win games by entering the clinch and fighting in the clinch, but now they break the game right when that happens, or pretty quick after that happens, so he can't use those kind of advantages. So what we're going to be looking at today is how he's winning without using the clinch game. Let's turn this down a little bit here. He's always had forward pressure, so let's check that out. Very nice. Okay. So, first play out of here. This one. Obviously, he's offensive pressure with the cut. I've always, I've told you guys that since forever ago. And it's essentially all of that is just a bait to get the other player to come in so he can counter. So one is have a hard pressure cut forward, forward pressure. Good return by Spain. Ooh, nice try with the punch there. And good hands on. So notice he doesn't. One small adjustment I noticed already. I watched this previously just to get my eyes warmed up. One small adjustment he has is he doesn't let it get into the clinch, obviously, because that's when it closed and he doesn't want to lose that situation. So as soon as he gets close, he does a good job of getting his hands on his partner to make sure there's always space so they don't break it. And that way, even in the small space, he's still able to get his kicks off and it's more opportune. It's it's better for him because his legs are shorter to be at that close distance than it is for the taller person. A good job there. Follow up while you're close. Follow up while you're close. Maximize points. Good. That's what I was talking about. He's getting his hands on instead of letting it close. So far, we're seeing three different weapons. We see that clinch, we see the axe kick, and we see the front hand punch. We'll try for the front hand punch. Follow up. What can Spain do here? Well, one, Spain can try and dictate the pace of the match by going on offense, but he's not. He's just waiting for Benseo. Nice change, change of target there. Got a little, he's got a right hand punch too. Rear hand. Very nice. Something I want you guys to notice too is he's not just kicking and then sitting. He kicks and there's follow up if there's in range. He already paid the price to get close. You put yourself in danger to get close. Maximize when you're there. It's, okay. it's going to happen if you're if you're pressing. Good follow up. Change target. Change target. Ooh, that was close. Good job getting his hands on. That's something I learned. For, I saw from Gao also, the Korean fighter Gao. He's really good at changing stance and shifting the other person's armor while in the clinch. Very nice. Very nice. Right for the head. Right leg coming. Nope. Never mind. Nice punch. No punches given. No. Well, Very nice. Well, exit coming soon? No. Coming soon. Punch may be coming soon. Waiting? No. Oh, maybe that's what he's trying to fish for. Rear hand punch. As soon as Spain goes open stance, he likes to do that rear hand punch to close the distance. This match is pretty much over. So I'm going to start swapping it out to the next match. But in general, as always, always hard offensive pressure. Always hard offensive pressure on that front foot. It could be the axe kick, could be that front hand punch, could be the cut, could be the front leg roundhouse. Doesn't matter. Then after that, there's two things that, three things that happen. One is he. He immediately follows up right away because if they cancel or they close or the whole distance and he's jammed up mid space, not close enough to grab, 
but he's jammed up mid space. That's opportune time for Jensei Obey to be kicking, and so he does kick. That's all he does is just kick, follow up, follow up, follow up, kick, etc. The second thing that happens when he does that is the person can get close, and Jensei is good at getting his hands on him to make sure that he they still have to fight in that really close distance that's not ideal for the other guy but is good for him so when he gets there instead of letting the hogus touch which is i think where they're supposed to do the uh where they're supposed to break and then separate the fighters when he does that now he gets in there and he gets his hands on them and he starts doing the gal uh, that gal move where he, he's switching his feet on the bottom so it's hard for the person to guess which leg is going to come up and then the third thing is nice and simple he's follow-ups if the guy moves back which Spain was doing, they actually almost caught him. That would be a pretty good defense here. But he's gonna he'll kick if the guy slides out of the way or tries to retaliate. He will let the person come. After he closes distance, he lets the person come, and then he's hitting him on the counter. So offense with four different moves. Defense after that, the follow-up, he has three different variables on top of that. Let's see how we're doing against Russia in the final, I believe this is. Ooh. I have watched this match once or twice before. I thought it was pretty good. I just watched it for entertainment purposes, though. I wasn't trying to break it down or anything. Russia puts up a pretty good fight, but is just unable to land the uh, land the hits. Vincenzo's got that nice rear hand punch set up alongside on this stance with his cut. I'd like to see him go to the face one or two times though. Turn this down a little bit too. X kick incoming? Nope. Guess not. Just cancel. Russia's doing a good job trying to press the fight to him, so it's good. Ooh, nice try. This was a good try. So that's just a follow-up. And good try for Russia to try and bait that out. Because he knows the reason this is effective, and I think it's a good call by Russia, is because Jun, he knows that Korea on this side likes to go open stance. Likes to go open stance attacks. So things to his, uh, not obviously his back, to his front side. He likes to go things to his front side. So that could be a punch. That could be the roundhouse kick. And for him to try and set this up, I give him applause for that because that's a good, good trap he set up. He just wasn't able to hit him. Oh, that was close. Mm, I don't know if I would give him that. X? Nice. Uh, say X um, because, well, when I watched this before, but two, he's been doing a lot of body shots, so it's opportune time for you to change the target and go to the head. And good defense so far by Korea here because Russia's been on the offensive. He's been dictating the pace of the match, which is great. But now he's starting to trap him as he comes in. He's understanding he's not going to set the pace. If that's the case and you're going to come to me, well, I'll just hit you up as I'm moving backwards. This Russia guy's got some good timing. It's just unfortunate it's not hitting. Both want to scrap in the clinch, which is interesting. So I think I remember the rest of this match. Uh, J Russia has some good ideas, and he's pretty close on some of his moves, but unfortunately, it's just not accurate enough to put points on the board. And Jinseo technically, uh, my technically not like, I guess the word technically, he technically breaks him apart, meaning the accuracy is just slightly better. The defense on the blocking is just slightly better. Both of them have great ideas that they use against each other, but Korea is able to put points on the board when he does it rushes off by an inch or two and is unable to do it which is probably explains why he's in the final against him but not uh isn't able to take the crown so overall when if for you guys who are smaller fighters who, where the clinch is now taken away from you it is imperative that you get stronger upper bodies because you need to be able to hold the tall person at distance because if you don't do that and they're stronger than you or they're able to bypass your arms they're gonna get chest to chest 
or hogu to hogu and then the ref's gonna break the fight and you won't have opportunity to score anymore Jin, uh, both of these guys are very good at getting in the clinch and getting hands on the chest and ar armor right away so that way their your chest don't touch and you're still able to kick while at close distance while that's opportune for you the other part of this is you have to watch out for head kicks as those are incoming that's a tall man's game when you're in close just try to try and go for the head watch out for that but overall just to recap if you want to break down jinseo's game if you want to play like his game you need to think this sounds dumb and cliche but two steps ahead you need to think what are my offensive weapons that can score? Because some of you guys are sending me tapes and you're like, how's my cut kick? And your cut kick is not a threat. When I'm watching it, if I were watching your cut kick, I would not think it's a threat. If you're, When you're hitting people with it, if they're not moving back, if they're not scared that you're going to score with that cut kick, it's not a threat. You need a threat level cut kick. Okay. You also need a threat level head kick, which Jinseo hit this guy in the axe kick multiple times. His offensive punch is scary. They don't score as many punches here, but... In other tournaments and other opens i'm sure they're scoring that front hand punch and then the last one was uh he has a front leg round kick which he doesn't use that much it's to the body more of a just change target make him think kind of thing um i haven't seen him score with that offensively but i've seen the cut score i've seen the axe kick score that punch and the technique definitely would score and then on top of that you're you already took the risk of closing the distance on this guy so now you're in close fight zone not clinch but the close fight zone how do you maximize that well, Jinseo here sometimes goes to the head. There's other times where he'll just keep following up no matter what. He has that front leg twist. He has that front leg roundhouse. He doesn't go to the head too often. Or, or after if you want to follow up at that distance, you're too close for that. Hands on. Get your hands on this guy and start kicking in the clinch. Because if you're Togu's touch, that's a break. So you want to keep them just separated enough to where your kicks have a little bit better trajectory than your opponents and you can score. And the last thing is, if you're not trying to mess with that or, you're, or you're, you've done a lot of offensive pressure already and they're compensating by trying to meet you halfway, you do a little bit of offensive pressure and you fade as they're coming back. So if you do offensive pressure, offensive pressure, eventually you're going to do offensive pressure and then they're going to try and meet you. If they do that here and they try and meet you after, boom, fade and hit them on the way out. That's essentially the elements that i'm noticing of jin Seo's game if you guys notice any other elements that i've missed my eyes are a little bit rusty please leave that in the comments below i like learning i hope this helped you guys and i'll see you guys next time